Hi guys, you guys might be wondering who this foreign guy with us today. Uh, let us ask himself who he is. Hello, my name is uh, Sifu Tommy Luke Bulik. I'm from Germany and I'm here in Sri Lanka to promote and to teach the beautiful art of Wing Chun Kung Fu. We uh, have schools here in Colombo and uh, in the Sri Lanka area and we also teach at the uh, police college um, self-defense classes, violence prevention classes uh, for adults and for children. How do you like Sri Lanka and how do you like the weather? Oh, I love it. Today we're lucky with the weather. The last few days uh, were pretty rainy, but uh, today I'm really, really glad. And people are super nice, so I love coming over here. This is, I believe, my sixth or seventh time over here, and I enjoy it every time I'm here. Uh, tell about your, about your martial arts. Okay. Yes. Well, it's called Wing Chun, and it comes from China. Uh, you may uh, be familiar with it because Bruce Lee, the famous uh, actor, uh, made it famous a long time ago. Uh, Wing Chun is not a sport. It's not a fighting sport, per se, but it's a um, system of self-defense, so it's very brutal. We deal with uh, gouges to the eye, with strikes to the throat, and uh, kicks to the groin. So everything that is unfair <laughs> and evil, that's pretty much what the system does. So you have to be a very responsible person to actually use this. And this is also the way that we teach it. Um, due to the um, aggressiveness with which the, the system works, it's perfect po for police officers uh, in their line of duty. Um, of course, uh, it doesn't only consist of these brutal elements. It also has wrist training control techniques where an officer, for example, has to, has to deal with the subject and has to take him down and uh, haul him off, for example, without actually injuring him. So there's a variety of things that you can uh, teach when it comes or that you can learn when it comes to the system. It's definitely one of the best um, self-defense tools. So if you really want to learn how to defend yourself in an efficient way, if you don't have big muscles, but, but you want to be able to defend yourself against somebody who is more aggressive and bigger than you, then Wing Chun is definitely a good deal. How does this differ from karate? Is this a part of karate? Or? No, well, karate is uh, Japanese style. Uh, Wing Chun comes from China, um, and uh, karate is uh, nowadays it's a sport. So there are certain rules to it. There are certain things that you are allowed to do, and other things that you're not allowed to do. In Wing Chun, everything goes. If you win the fight, then that's pretty much what you do. So that's the idea. There are no rules to it. It's a pure system of self-defense. Okay, well, so um, Wing Chun has four core principles. The first one is, if the way is clear, go forward. That means if I face an opponent who stands there with open guard, for example, then I'm not going to walk around him, but I'm going to go straight to the target. That's the first one. The second one would be, if I encounter resistance, I stick. So let's say I try to attack him, but his arm comes up, then I will stick with his arms. I will not bring the arm back. If I do, then he's able to punch me. The third one is, if the opponent's strength is too great, you yield. So I tried to punch him, it didn't work, and then he comes in with his force, and I yield, so I borrow his force. And this is also what makes it possible for somebody who does not have a lot of strength to actually recycle the opponent's force. And then the fourth principle is, I try to punch him, and he comes in with his force. When the opponent retreats, or he drops his arm, then I follow. So we're going to show you a few demonstrations of how we can, uh, um, of how we can demonstrate these principles in As you can see, it goes pretty quickly. It's pretty brutal. <laughs> yeah, so the idea is really that a person who does not have superior strength is able to deal with an opponent who's aggressive and is able to finish off the scenario within a split second, or at least within a few seconds. That's the main idea. And I also would like to explain to you a little bit about the training programs that we have. So we have a pretty unique training method that's called sticky hands, or in Chinese it's called qi sao. What happens in qi sao is um, we have the idea that somebody attacks me and I somehow get in contact with his limbs, maybe with his arms, maybe with his legs. And the idea is that I always know where my own arm is, right? Now since his limbs are attached to mine now, and if he moves, then he gives me the information that he's about to hit me. Now if I get out of the way of my own arm, then I'm actually able to lead him astray and make use of this force. So in the chiso exercise, you see this funny rolling around of the arms, right? What we do here is 
we bring our arms into different positions all the time. Look, sometimes I'm at the outside, sometimes I'm on top, sometimes I'm at the inside, sometimes I'm below. And every arm does something different. So we train both of our brain hemispheres to adapt. Now, from here we begin with basic attacks, for example, a palm strike or a punch or a backhand attack. And then later the, uh, um, it becomes a little bit more uh, complex where I hit the arms away and I strike or I lock the arms up and then I try to attack him. And then there is something that we call a section. A section is um, a number of techniques that we practice in a flow which takes our arms into different scenarios all the time so that the student actually learns to react without having to see what's going on. So it's not that I see he punches me and then I do this. Because if I would do this, then maybe I'm too quick and he hits me. But the idea is that I get in contact with his arms and now I have all the information that I need. If he should push against my face now, then I can make use of this. If he should push down now, I can make use of this. If he should push to my throat now, I can make use of this because he's providing me with the information that I need since my arms are attached to his. So let me show you this section. So what you see here is we started with very basic attacks where the palm came in, we rotated, and then maybe I did something like this, and maybe I attacked him from here. And of course, for each of these little techniques, there's an application for a real life scenario. So let's say we use this movement here, then this would mean in a real life scenario that he attacks my throat, and I go into this very movement. So that's the idea. And once you're able to apply these things in a free fight scenario, as you saw before, then you now have an idea of what Wing Chun is all about.